Well, more than two dozen people were arrested this week on the campuses of the University of South Florida, Florida State University, and the University of Florida for protesting on behalf of Palestinian human rights. Campus demonstrations swept across Florida and the U.S. this week, calling for divestment from Israel and from companies that profit from the war in Gaza. More than 34,000 Palestinian people have been killed in Gaza amid Israel's military attack. That operation was triggered by Hamas's incursion into southern Israel on October 7th of last year, when about 1,200 Israelis, mostly civilians, were killed and more than 240 people were taken hostage. Outrage over the humanitarian crisis in Gaza sparked the 13 demonstrators who were arrested this week on the USF Tampa campus. Ten of those arrests came on Tuesday when USF police declared a gathering of demonstrators no longer peaceful and had become illegal. The gathering was broken up with USF police firing tear gas. Most of those arrested were charged with misdemeanors, but several were charged with felonies, including one person who had a firearm. He was charged with aggravated assault with intent to commit a felony with a weapon. Divya, you and your fellow reporters at the Tampa Bay Times have been covering this issue closely for the last several days, especially at USF, but also around the state. What were the students doing at USF and what, how did the police respond? Sure, so at USF, protests started Monday. Um, and I think the first day of protest, there were three um, individuals who were arrested. Um, one was a student, one was an employee, and I think one was a community member. Um, I think they initially started, they were protesting outside the library um, and they'd been told not to protest there, so they moved their protest to the MLK Plaza. Was it a peaceful protest? They were chanting and um, yeah, it was a peaceful protest. I think even at that, there was law enforcement around and nobody um, had issues with the um, sort of the way they were protesting, it was more that there was a university policy that I guess that they didn't want them protesting in that location. Um, and there was an issue with the org um, that the university had with the organization that um, was organizing the protest. And so they moved the location of the protest, um, and that's when uh, the protesters put up these tents, which um, you're seeing at other places in the country. Um, and the tents do violate the university policy. Right. I think the university has a policy that, like, if there's a tent on campus, it has to have, like, prior authorization. Um, and I guess they didn't have that. And so that's when on the first day, uh, law enforcement, I think took, or police officers took um, somebody who was trying to set up a tent. Um, and then uh, I guess after that, they came back and um, I think there's some pictures of that too. It was quite a uh, scuffle and two more people uh, were taken into custody. Do we have any idea why the police, and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but why did the police use tear gas and rubber bullets on the USF campus? Was there violence on the part of the protesters in the ensuing days? Sure, so on the second day, um, protesters gathered at 10 a.m. Again, it was peaceful. Um, I think there were some speeches, People were some people were studying and just kind of making um, their, uh, their statement, I think, at some point in the afternoon, I think the protesters kind of made a circle, uh, two circles, um, initially around people who were praying, and then I, after there were tents that were put up again in the center of their circle, um, some had uh, these plywood, uh, pieces of like plywood and umbrellas, um, which they among themselves were saying they would use that as shields and among themselves were saying not to use against police but to resist police. Um, and I think there was also social media posts um, calling for more people uh, to join and I think that's what the police said um, when they determined it was no longer a peaceful event. Did you see evidence that uh, Jewish students were harassed or anybody was blocked from attending classes at USF? So the area itself is kind of away from a lot of the like thoroughfare, so there wasn't really um, any restriction. Um, I think from what I heard, um, I you know didn't hear that, but um, I think there are some people who um, 
some of some of the chants, it, it depends on how you're interpreting them. And you can talk to two people, and they'll have a very different um, opinion of what the same thing means. Uh, I, I want to play Sharon uh, the voices of two students who were at a CARE, a Council on American Islamic Relations press conference after these demonstrations were broken up at USF. I want to play what they said about their treatment by the USF police. Here they are. I couldn't see where I was going, but I heard people screaming. I heard the cops on their bikes chasing them down. I heard rubber bullets hitting flesh. I heard helicopters swarming the air. And I ran for dear life. And why has our government sent armed police and snipers to our campuses, arresting and abusing unarmed American students and professors? Sharon, what did you think of the treatment of the, uh, the protesters there at USF? Well, obviously, they were violating campus policy. And they were also warned. They didn't adhere to the warnings and they wouldn't leave. I think even the sprinklers may have been turned on and they had their umbrellas. They were getting a free shower and they couldn't complain they didn't have water. But um, you, so what do you do? You stand there and allow them to bring more tents in as uh, was just stated and more people violate the campus policy or you do something about it. And again, they were warned so in the stories that were just related, they failed to mention that they were warned they needed to leave, and they were given a time frame to do it. Tar, what do you make of the use of tear gas and rubber bullets on the USF campus? You're a professor at a, at a college, St. Pete College. What, what do you make of it? Well, first off, uh, freedom of speech is important as long as time, place, and manner considerations are um, complied with. And violence is never condoned. It's not condoned from protesters, and it's not condoned from the police. But there's another way that we're not talking about. There's four institutions in this country, Rutgers, Minnesota, Northwestern, and Brown, that, that turned away from the USF model. And they said, listen, we're going to use diplomatic measures to sort of de-escalate and try to come to an understanding. They gave special uh, scholarships to Palestinians, safe spaces to Muslims. They didn't divest from our Jewish friends. And they, of course, gave what Sun Tzu called a golden bridge out to the students. They said, listen, you're young. As long as you didn't violate a law, and Sharon and I can agree with that. As long as we didn't, they didn't violate the law, then we have created an, a pathway of amnesty. And students shouldn't be shielded from the law, just like a former president shouldn't be shielded from the law. They should be held account. But it is a learning environment, and First Amendment considerations, a robust, pluralistic society depends on this. And dissonance is not the same as violence. All right, Teresa, what'd you make of the protests at the University of Florida, Florida State University, and the USF? Tampa campus. I think the punishment definitely did not um, uh, kind of meet the the, the offense. Um, I think violating, uh, I, I've personally violated school policy all the time. I think we all have, and I think it's incredibly brave um, for students to stand up against violence against um, the people of Palestine. Um, I think it's also important to note that we live in Florida where protesting has literally been sort of outlawed, right, by all intents and purposes. Um, so it's not surprising. Um, however, I think it's uh, important that we continue to, to amplify um, the fact that 99% of these protests, not only here in Florida, but across the country, were peaceful. And we're kind of extrapolating and focusing on those few, yeah. um, as we generally do. Okay.